Welcome folks to another edition of Commissioner's Corner. I'm Josh Brown, County Commissioner for Central Kitsap. I'm here with Char Burnett from VCAD. Welcome, thank you for joining me again. Thanks for coming to the studio. So I understand you have some questions about some things that are happening in the county and, and some things to look list. forward to in the fall. I have a huge list that right. I'm interested in that I know the folks at home will want to hear about. First of all, we're going to talk about parks mm -hmm. and the huge addition of the Newberry Hill Heritage Park. Lots of work going on up there. Yes. Tell us about it. Well, over the summer, the county uh, completed acquisition of several hundred acres for the Newberry Hill Heritage Park to, to give folks uh, a little idea of where the park will be located, just south of Clahalia High School on Newberry Hill Road, east of Seabeck Holly Highway. The county currently controls um, about 700 acres of open space. The park will eventually be about a thousand acres in size and the idea is to have passive open space trails just west of, of Silverdale so that we have a permanent buffer between urban Silverdale and uh, rural parts of, of Seabag and, and Hood mm -hmm. Canal. So the county, uh, this will be our second heritage park in central Kitsap, the Illahee Preserve which has about 400 acres is our is our primary um, heritage park in East Bremerton. So this will be our second one in the Central Kitsap uh, Commissioner District. And we've been working through the process of completing this land acquisition with the state. Uh, about a month ago, the, the commissioners received a briefing from staff and we decided to okay moving forward with a master planning process. And the goal is to really make the Newberry Hill Heritage Park a model for community involvement, for stewardship, for volunteerism, and to really let the community and public input guide what happens at the park. That's and I think, great. I think what we've learned with the Illahi Preserve is that when you have an active stewardship committee, you get much more out of volunteers than what you could ever get just out of relying 100% on county staff. Mm -hmm. so. And there's a huge group of folks involved in the Illahee Preserve, just like um, the Clear Creek Trail. Mm -hmm. They own it, they love it, they want to make sure it's taken care of. I think that's huge. Yeah, well, I think part of the, the challenge here is to take a lot of the magic from the Clear Creek Trail and mm -hmm. get a lot of the energy and mm -hmm. excitement from folks that work on the Clear Creek Trails and, and generate that and transfer it over to the Newberry Hill Heritage Park. We, um, in, our, in our planning committee, uh, Tex Lewis, who's been so active with the Clear Creek Trail, he's been a member of our, of our planning committee. Uh, Bob Moyer, uh, Rich Shattuck, members of the Community Council, members of our Newberry Hill Stewardship Committee, um, Helen Daly, who's been a longtime member of our Parks Advisory Committee. They're helping me right now come up with a master planning process, which we're gonna present to the commissioners uh, sometime in, um, in, in late October and, and the idea is to have a, an open house to kind of kick off the planning process publicly sometime in November and then get it completed sometime in the spring so that work can actually begin on building trails and, and mm -hmm. other park amenities mm -hmm. in the good weather months of, of 2010. So who's going to lead the efforts for staff? Is it a park department uh, responsibility to lead the master planning process? That's correct. That's yeah. great. Yeah, so the you have a lot of talented lead. folks there in that department that are certainly capable of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. That's very good. Um, also along the parks line, we have a new director coming on board all mm -hmm. the way from New Jersey. That's right, Jim Dunwoody. And, you know, we um, went through a process to, um, to try to find a new parks director and now, this is the, the second time as commissioner I've gone through the process of interviewing candidates to be parks director. And, you know, the first time I, I was a new commissioner, a couple of months on the job, and I think it, it was at the time a challenge really trying to find the right mix. Mm -hmm. And w what was really exciting about this process was the fact that, um, you know, all of our finalists, were people that would be exceptional parks directors. So we were really picking from strength. And the gentleman that Good. we're bringing on board, Jim Dunwitty, he comes from New Jersey, um, uh, you know, such a small world. He actually was the assistant parks director in the same county where my brother and his family lives, which is a beautiful part of, of New Jersey, about an hour and a half outside of uh, New York. And Jim has just excellent experience in terms of managing parks. And I think he really brings a level of of excitement, of energy, but professionalism that we really need in our parks mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to fit right in with Kitsap County. And 
I know one of the things he was really excited about was the opportunities moving out here to the Pacific Northwest mm. and in a community like ours where we have, for a county of our size, a very diverse parks portfolio. Mm -hmm. We have about 78 parks. We have a lot of open space. We have a county fair that brings about 90,000 people a year. So there's a lot of great things for him to work on, and we're very excited for him to get started. Great. So Excellent. Well, let's talk a little bit about the CK Community Campus. I understand the commissioners have um, just signed on with Mercy Housing, is that mm -hmm. correct? Tell us a little bit about that and how it affects the community campus. Well, the community campus is about 12 acres of land undeveloped in downtown Silverdale. And the vision has always been to have the campus be the, the central hub for, for the Silverdale community. So eventually having community centers, rec centers, having a new branch of our uh, Kitsap Regional Library in Silverdale, performing arts mm -hmm. venue, mm -hmm. uh, senior housing, and really build a pedestrian friendly urban center for our community. And I think you know, one of the challenges that I've had in Silverdale and in Central Kitsap is the fact that w when I became commissioner, a lot of folks would say, well, you know, the reason why I go to Silverdale is to go to the mall mm -hmm. or to go shopping. And that's fine. You know, Silverdale's our, our regional retail center. Mm -hmm. But I think for folks that grew up in Silverdale, you know, that went to CK High School, that have their kids in the community, really having Silverdale known more for, you know, for, for more things than just shopping, being known for community, being known for having places for families to gather mm -hmm. with, with mm -hmm. you know, with, with teens, with, with seniors. That's what's important to people, that, that, that community connection. And that's what the campus is about. So the, the first project we've, uh, we've engaged uh, in being developed on the campus site is a, a new YMCA. And a lot of folks have been following the progress that we've made on the YMCA front. The county put in a million dollars of capital money to jumpstart the process. To date, uh, between grants, the county's contribution, financing the Y's bringing to the table, about $11 million has been secured for that project. And we're planning and designing a Y that'll be about 75,000 square feet, similar in size to the, the Y in Gig Harbor. Mm -hmm. And I think is really gonna be an improvement on that Gig Harbor project. And w our goal uh, is, and, and what we're working through with, with the Y right now is to break ground on that facility spring of 2010. So about six months away. And then Exciting. opening it in 2011. So as we're working full steam ahead on that project, and you know the county has signed a letter of intent with the library district so that when the library has financing in place, mm -hmm. they'll have a home right on the village commons in the heart of the campus for a new branch of a, of a Silverdale library. But as we're doing that, um, we're also looking at the needs in our community for seniors. And the county, as part of our restructuring with the housing authority, the county took on <laughs> the Poplar Senior Housing Project. The prior Board of Commissioners uh, wanted the, the Housing Authority to develop Poplars and convert the Poplars Motel into right, senior housing. Right. And the county um, backed the credit of that project. Well, as part of the restructuring, the county uh, took that responsibility on. And what we just signed at our, at our um, uh, last Board of County Commissioners meeting was an option agreement with Mercy Housing. Mercy is one of the largest developers of senior housing in the country. And they bring a lot of credibility, a lot of expertise to the table. And the idea is to build a new 60 unit senior housing complex right across uh, f from where the YMCA is gonna go. Great. And if we receive the HUD grants that, we're, that Mercy's applying for, we'd break ground sometime in the spring of 2010 on that senior housing and it would open in 2011. So the plan would be then for the 32 senior housing residents um, or 32 senior housing units of Poplars to eventually move them into a brand new 60 unit complex and have that right in the heart of the community campus. So it's exciting that we're able to do this project because we're, it fits in with our master plan for mm -hmm. the campus. Mm -hmm. We're protecting the senior residents that are at Poplars. We're, we're actually doubling the number of units and then the county has the full flexibility to redevelop the frontage on Silverdale Way to help pay off the debt that, that was acquired uh, as part oh, of that restructuring. Good. So we're, we're really making things come together. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think my staff kids me you know, once in a while that 
you know, first it was just the Y project, and now we have the senior housing project. And we're hoping that maybe sometime in 2010 we can be talking about the library being a, a, a partner in developing a project. And they said, geez Louise, you know, we, we, <laughs> thought, we thought just one of these projects might happen. Now everything is coming together one after the other, and I think it's a pretty good example of when you have good momentum for good community projects, partners mm -hmm. step up. People want to come. And, in. you know, you look at the folks that have given money to the YMCA, um, Ron and uh, Nadine Ross have contributed a million dollars. They really spurred the community effort, the Hazelwood family, mm -hmm. and the Y is going to be named the Hazelwood family YMCA. Um, they've made the largest charitable contribution in, in Kitsap County's history to one project, $2.5 million. So people are really stepping up to the plate, and I think piece by piece it's going to come together. So it's very exciting. Very exciting. So. And certainly needed in that community, we know that. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioner, what's happening with Greaves Way? Looks like lots of progress happening there, and are we going to be open soon? Absolutely. In fact, by the time uh, this episode of Commissioner's Corner is being played back, there's a good chance that the road will be open. We're Ooh. targeting sometime in the middle of November. And uh, Greaves Way is a new five-lane boulevard that we're building north of Wagga Way. Of course, we had a road naming effort, mm -hmm. which was, I think, the first time the county ever had a road naming contest. <laughs> so it's not every day we build a new road, right. and we wanted to make sure that the community was involved in this new road, and we named it. And, of course, the, the, the placeholder name was Wagga Way Extension, and we wanted to be absolutely sure people knew that Greaves Way was a different project than the Wagga Way Interchange, Wagga. which was a state project. <laughs> so that's part that's, of the reason yeah. why we wanted a different name. But actually, the real reason was the fact that the fire districts when there's new roads being built, it helps to have different road names so that there isn't confusion about what portion of a roadway is. Mm -hmm. So when you have um, where Greaves Way is going to connect, connects to Wagga Way, then on the opposite side it connects to Old Frontier. And if it was called Old Frontier or, or if it was right. given an address on, on Wagga Way, it would provide too much confusion for the, mm -hmm. for the fire uh, district. So we went through the road naming process. We're going to complete that project in a, in a couple weeks. And, you know, that's, I think, an, an excellent example of the county stepping up, providing infrastructure where we want growth to go. Mm -hmm. You know, part of the challenge with planning is figuring out where you want growth to go. The major challenge after figuring out where you want it to go and coming up with that game plan is providing the right infrastructure. Right. So this $13 million road is going to be the gateway into about 400 and 50 acres of land that is zoned for businesses. We have land that's zoned commercial, industrial, business center designations. And this is where the future growth of Silverdale is going to occur, right off of the freeway mm -hmm. between Trigger and the Mall Boulevard exits. And this new county road is going to help spur that redevelopment. So when we talk about the fact that we're in a recession right now, when we talk about the fact that you know, the unemployment rate is, is too high, Trying to get us back on track is providing opportunities for, for growth to come to our community mm -hmm. when, when the market turns around and when the economy begins to recover. And this project being completed this year is, I think, going to put Central Kitsap and Silverdale in a much stronger position for that rebound. Excellent. So we're excited about it. I bet the folks that live in Silverdale are excited because now as you try to get out of Silverdale, you don't have to go through the retail area to get on to walk away. And I think that is really beneficial. Yeah, a lot of folks who live off of um, Newberry or Anderson Hill Road, mm -hmm. um, you know, unfortunately, uh, if, you, if you live out in the Seabeck area, if you want to just go to the post office, you have to drive down Buckland Hill, past the high school, Mm -hmm. um, come into town, hang a left on Silverdale Way or Randall and cut <laughs> over. And, and it, now instead of having to come into town, you'll be able to hang a left um, on Old Frontier and just loop right around Greaves Way. So it, when we've done our, our traffic analysis, it will take pressure off Buckland Hill. It mm -hmm. will take pressure off of uh, Silverdale Way to some extent. Is it going to solve all of our problems? No, but it's part of the solution and I think it's going to have a, a good impact. So speaking of the pressure on Buckland Hill, mm -hmm. the um, new intersection of Buckland Hill and Tracy Dean Beach Road, absolutely fabulous. It is, it has really, really relieved a lot of pressure from folks that want to turn left and, or turn right. Mm -hmm. It really is very, very nice. 
Well, I appreciate the positive feedback. You know, we, um, in the past, the county, I think, has made the mistake of trying to design projects that are too big and too expensive. And a good example of that is, you know, roughly 10 years ago, the county had designs to completely widen Buckland Hill Road from three lanes to five lanes, building a, a, a new bridge mm. um, right across uh, Clear Creek. Clear Creek, right. You know, we've had similar plans in the Bethel Corridor. We've had similar plans for Ridgetop Boulevard, widening that from three to five lanes. And when projects, and if you're looking at some of these projects for widening um, roadways, just purchasing the right-of-way might be $10, 15000000 million. Mm -hmm. and, and then looking at the construction costs mm -hmm. might be another 10 to $15 million. The county, and, and uh, frankly, local governments in general, just aren't in a position to finance 20 to $30 million road projects. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And instead of spending a lot of money on design and engineering work for projects that we're just not going to be able to complete, what I've wanted our staff to do is to be focused on delivering projects that are improving our community in phases. And instead of you know, going for the grand slam, sometimes mm -hmm. you know, just getting a base hit is, is what you need to do. And the improvements to Tracy Dinn and Buckland are a good example of that. We can't widen all of Buckland Hill to five lanes. Okay. We just don't have the financial capacity. But what we can do is add some turn lanes and turn pockets. We did the same thing on Anderson Hill Road going out to, uh, to Seebeck. We're at Anderson and Apex. You get a lot of trucks that are going up, right. you know, to, uh, um, you know, uh, up to the industrial area off of Dickey. And, um, you know, they're, they stopped traffic going up that big hill. We added a turn pocket. You know, we're going to have more projects, I think, like Tracy Dinn and Buckland in the county's uh, transportation improvement plan in the future because I've been asking for them. And, you know, when we look at some of the other intersections in town, instead of doing, instead of looking at grandiose projects, Adding turn lanes here or there, I think, can have a big improvement on traffic flow. A couple other things we're doing is you'll you'll see it on Tracy Dinn and Buckland. Is the left-hand turn lane is a flashing yellow? That is so great. So we've budgeted throughout Silverdale. Um, I, I believe we have about a dozen intersections where, as we go through over the next year and upgrade the signals, the left-hand turn lanes are going to go into flashing yellows. Our new light at Anderson Hill and Silverdale Way was the, the first one, but all of our major intersections will have that. And it'll take us about a year to, to mm -hmm. get that completed, but that'll help traffic flow and you know um, give people a little more flexibility. And I, I, I think um, a lot of people like that once we upgrade those signals. The, the other thing just to add on the Tracing and Buckland project is that I've received a, a, a few calls and emails from folks who live on Tracing and that are concerned about the impacts that that road project will have on the safety uh, around Tracing Boulevard. So I just want folks to know that, you know, when the county does a project like that, and yes, we're trying to decrease congestion at some key choke points, I just want people to know that I understand that every project has an impact on communities. Mm -hmm. And you can't have a view that we're going to just solve congestion and make things worse for the residents that live on the roads in those areas. One of the things that we had to do, frankly, um, for, for that Tracing and Buckland project is on Tracing, and there was a, a small roundabout um, mm -hmm. that, that was a traffic, traffic calming device. We actually had mm -hmm. to remove that because the turn lane was of a certain length where oh. it, it wasn't safe and where we didn't have enough right away to put it back in place. We're going to monitor all the traffic counts on Tracing. We have traffic calming devices mm -hmm. already in place. Mm -hmm. We've been monitoring them since those traffic calming devices were put in place. Traffic is, is significantly down from, from prior to those um, calming devices being put in place. And, you know, if a year from now we have a significant uptick in speeding or in, uh, in, in the impact of the community there, we're going to look at ways to, to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So I just want folks to know that, you know, if they have concerns, even when we're doing projects that make sense in, 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 in town, if people think that we're not taking everything into consideration, I really appreciate the feedback Good. so that we can look at all sides of, of the issue and try to do what's right for the, for the community. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, well, Commissioner Brown, how much, um, how is the budget 
battle coming and we know that the administration office is closed on Friday are right. you thinking of continuing that how's the budget looking uh, frankly the budget's looking terrible and you know I think w what what I try to explain to folks is that the same pressures that people are feeling in the community mm -hmm. if you're a small business if you're in the retail business if you're in the real estate business the same pressures that are affecting your business and, and your family's income is affecting mm -hmm. the county. Mm -hmm. We're not immune from it. Mm -hmm. And the county has to balance our budget every year. So when we talk about the county having a deficit, the deficit cannot last. We have to either make cuts, raise revenues, or dip into reserves to balance the budget every year. We're not the federal government. We don't get to print money. So we have to live within our means. And what we have said over the last couple of years that we've been in this recession, is that the county is going to live within our means without asking the voters for, for more revenue. But what that means is that the cuts that we're facing are having real impacts mm -hmm. on our ability to provide basic government services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think what folks need to understand is, yes, you know, we closed as part of our supplemental cuts for 2009 the county courthouse on Fridays. We closed the courthouse on Fridays. And our staff that works in the admin building, I, I said the courthouse, but it's our admin it's building. The, admin. the courthouse is still open five days a week. But the county admin building where we have the commissioner's office, where we have the auditor, the assessor, treasurer, department of community development, we've closed that building on Fridays and we've reduced hours for our staff. So most of our staff have re been reduced from full time to point nine time, which means their take home pay has gone down 10%. And we've done that because we've been trying to keep people employed, mm -hmm. but we've also done that because we realize that um, it's, it, it would give us more flexibility with, with, with this closure on Fridays to manage their schedules. But, um, you know, I think one of the things that's, you know, that, that I just want folks to know is when we closed on Fridays, and, and I had a couple people email me or give me a call and say, well, I'm glad you gave all your county employees a three-day weekend. They're not three-day weekends. You know, they're, they're not working on Fridays, but in the same way that if you work construction mm -hmm. and you're told, well, don't come to work Friday or don't come to the mill Friday because we're not going to pay you, that's essentially what we've had to do with many of our county employees. Right. They're not coming to work Fridays and they're not getting a paycheck for those hours they're not mm -hmm. being asked to, to work any longer. Mm -hmm. It's really impacting them. Mm -hmm. just, like, yes, it is. just like things are impacting um, you know, taxpayers in our community. We, um, but when you look at the county budget, 70% of what we use local property taxes and our share of sales taxes on is criminal justice functions. 70% mm -hmm. of our general fund budget. So when we close the courthouse on Fridays and we reduced hours, that's part of the 30% that is not criminal justice. That's the minority of our budget. Right. And the budget that we adopted in 2009 was at about $88 million in expenditures. The budget we're having to adopt for 2010 to balance the budget is at $81 million. We're going to cut $7 million from 2009 to 2010. And the only way that you can cut $7 million is to look at all programs. And I say that to folks because when 70% of your budget is criminal justice, we're going to have impacts mm -hmm. to those core programs. Mm -hmm. We've unfortunately are, ha have not funded deputy positions. We're going to have a reduction in prosecutors. The county jail, we don't have work release any longer. And, you know, the work release program is a good example of, I think, a, a program that is preventative. Mm -hmm. Instead of having somebody in the county jail and then just one day, you know, be mm -hmm. released, the point of the, the work release program is to get people a job so that when they are released, instead of getting back in their bad habits, they're a taxpayer and they're a yeah. good citizen again, right. get them on their feet. Right. It's, it's not, you know, it, it's trying to give them an opportunity. It's not giving them a handout. Our drug court program, we haven't been able to accept new people into it because of limited funding. We've reduced critical programs in our juvenile detention center, our secure crisis uh, center was a program that served about 500 youths a year that mainly served um, kids that were runaways that came from families where there was violence, where there mm -hmm. was drug abuse by the parents, maybe mental illnesses. 
we're, we've cut the fat away in county government. Um, we've, for our non-represented employees, we've had a 0% COLA for 2009. We're working with all of our bargaining units right now on freezing right. increases. But even freezing salaries, even cutting back salaries, um, you know, the commissioners, we're self-paying our, our medical expenses. Even doing all these things, we're going to have to come up with $7 million of cuts. And it's affecting people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we have folks um, that are going to be considering, you know, in, in November, Initiative 1033. You know, folks, I think, need to understand that if that passes, we're not going to be able to rehire and bring programs back in line when the economy recovers. We're going to be locked in in this recession mode. And my concern, and I know the concern of our sheriff, the concern of our prosecutor, the concern of all of our judges, is that these cuts are going to get to a level where it's going to really affect our quality of life and, and safety in our community. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty darn serious. So these aren't fun times, and they're challenging times, and we're trying to be very creative with our solutions, and we're trying to be smart. And I think the way that we've approached this budget is to try to make the same decisions that any reasonable person in our community would. But it's challenging. It's, I and, bet it's very And I say that not to complain. I say that just so folks know that, you know, the county and, you know, the, the, the issues we're dealing with uh, as commissioners are the same issues that mm -hmm. businesses and individuals are facing in our community. It's tough, and we're going to have to work together. And I just ask that, you know, folks provide, you know, a little bit of patience, and, you know, as we're dealing with, with these challenges. We're not doing it to punish anyone. We're doing it because <laughs> it's our only option. Right. So. Right. But um, Commissioner, I'm going to let you ch um, close now and sure. um, wish you all success and thanks for coming in and I sharing your it. insights. Do you have any updates for things happening at BCAT? I would, I'm so glad you asked. Right. Um, as you're tuning into this County Commissioner's Corner, you might have known that BCAT has a new look. Um, we did purchase a playback system that is making us look smoother, and you hopefully you have noticed a difference and appreciate you asking. The county is also working on their live coverage of the commissioner meetings, which happen right. the second and fourth Mondays. Uh, we need folks to understand that the, commission, uh, the county staff really is working on that. Um, there have been some network issues, and the uh, Department of um, Information Services is really taking the lead in trying to work on that. And appreciate folks' input, and we want the county to be live. They should be live, the commissioners, and that work is hard at it and might yep. have been already improved by the time this is airing, we yeah. hope. Well, the transition of being live, we, it, it's very exciting. We have some challenges, and we appreciate folks being patient. I know it's frustrating to us when we don't get it exactly right, so, mm -hmm. but we're going to get there. And I, Shara, I appreciate your questions, appreciate your time, and thank you very thank much. you for joining me, and I appreciate everybody for you know, watching another episode of Commissioner's Corner. I look forward to being with you in a couple months with a new episode. <laughs>